to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. So Jane Lister was nice enough to tell me I was live, but couldn't see it on my end. So I'm back. Try again. <laughs> yeah, here I are. <laughs> Couldn't find myself. <laughs> Stuff happens. <laughs> Power company's outside. I don't know if they're doing something. Who knows? <laughs> Good morning, take two. Morning, Dennis. <laughs> and Denise says it's frozen. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to use a different cable computer service at the new house. We, we still got to suffer with this for a few more months, though. <laughs> at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back. <laughs> Teresa said, sent me a text and said, now I'm frozen. I, but it's not frozen on my end. So I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk about chronic coughing, and this uh, applies to dogs as well as cats. Oh, you got notification. That's good. I'm thinking they're a little slow notifying, or maybe it's just because I'm later because the numbers are going up slowly. But... Um, so the the problem with chronic coughing in dogs or cats is one you need to know what's causing the cough um, in dogs probably the most common reason we get for coughing is a collapsed trachea in the small breeds uh, but certainly heartworms um, so heart disease in large dogs is more likely to be a dilated cardiomyopathy, whereas in small dogs, it's more likely to be mitral valve disease, uh, if we're getting any fluid buildup in the lungs. Um, cats, we get a lot of chronic asthma problems. Uh, that's probably the most common coughing problem in cats. Heartworms in cats actually shows up as vomiting most commonly, uh, but heartworms in cats is really not very common, maybe in the deep south where heartworms are just a bigger problem in general. Um... So first thing we need is a diagnosis. How are we gonna get a diagnosis? Well, certainly chest x-rays are going to be very helpful. Echocardiogram, if there's any kind of a heart murmur. Um, uh, it could require something like uh, bronchoscopy, sticking a scope down the airways and seeing what's going on down there. Could require um, uh, uh, aspirates down there doing a flush of the uh, airways and getting some fluid back out and then doing cultures to see if we've got a bacterial problem going on down there. So a lot of times we need a lot of work done to get the correct diagnosis. And then once we have the diagnosis, we can treat more specifically. Um, there are some general things that you can do to help animals who have a chronic cough. Um, for uh, particularly for asthma and uh, bronchitis type issues, uh, there the the lungs think of them like a sponge, like the, your kitchen sink sponge. And let's let's think of a natural sponge, not those synthetic things. But a sponge, when it's really well, so if you want to wipe your cabinets down and you've got a dry sponge, it's not going to pick up very much. It's not going to do a very good job. So you're not going to get much exchange between the cells in the sponge and um, what's on that countertop. But if you moisten that sponge, then it does a really good job at cleaning up what you want it to clean up. So the lungs are like that sponge. They, they actually, if you take the lungs, damp sponge um, and they've got all the little air pockets in them and the lungs like moisture but not too much moisture so think of your sponge when it's totally drenched it doesn't do a great job cleaning up anything it just leaves puddles of moisture behind so the lungs are, are very very uh, specific about how much moisture they want in their little sponge so that the air cells are able to open up and clean the air that's coming in 
And then there's little hairs called cilia that line the airways, and they push back out anything that is a, a pollutant to the lungs. So any little foreign body materials, they try to push back out. So for instance, um, when you get, uh, you know, when you when you have a cold or something, uh, and you or you're outside and there's a lot of pollen, you start sneezing. You start with the runny nose. That's because your airways are trying to push that stuff back out, and that's how it does it. It, it makes fluid and it it causes you know the sneezing to push that stuff back out of the airways. You might cough uh, when there's a lot of pollen in the air because it's trying to push stuff back out. So we do see chronic asthma in kitty cats, and we do see chronic uh, bronchitis or uh, lower airway disease in dogs that can cause a chronic dry cough. So we bring up all kinds of goo and phlegm. If we have an animal who's in heart failure, we're going to get more of a wet cough. It's like, oh, I'm trying to get this stuff out of here. Um, and they're clearing their throat and maybe we've got a drippy nose that goes along with that. So what can we do to help these animals who have these chronic inflammatory problems? Uh, and a lot of times it's a diagnosis by rule out. You rule out collapsed trachea, you rule out heart disease, you rule out pneumonia, you rule out infection, and you're left with this just inflammatory dry cough. And you can usually diagnose it on x-rays. Uh, particularly with kitty cats, we get what we call donuts, on, which are thickening of the airways and they look like little round donuts on the x-ray. Uh, saw a lot of it in cats. So there is a great herb called Bufesan, B-U-F-E-I, Bufesan, which is a yin tonic. Because a lot of times these animals, their airways are too dry, particularly if you live in a really hot, dry environment or your house with the heat on in the winter and you don't have uh, humidification of that dry air, that will cause more of that coughing. So um, something like Bufesan, which is an herb that is a yin tonic, for the lungs can be very helpful. And generally, it may need to be given during the really dry seasons, or it may need to be given for a few months to get the lungs back where they need to be. Um, needless to say, dry food, feeding dry food, is going to increase the dryness in the body. So these animals need to be on a high moisture, I'm talking about the uh, allergic bronchitis, asthma animals. They need to be on a high moisture food. Uh, to, to help moisturize. We don't want to be dehydrating the body. Uh, there are nebulizers. There's one called AeroCat that is very common, commonly used for cats. I had one cat in practice. The owner, had, the cat had been diagnosed elsewhere and she was using the AeroCat with a steroid inhaler and the cat went bald because it was so overloaded with steroids. She was nebulizing three or four times a day. The cat was so overloaded with steroids, it, it lost all of its hair. It basically, they made it into a Cushingoid cat, which is really unusual, but it, it, it was just because it was being given so many steroids. Um, uh, certainly you can use something like a buster cage for extra oxygen if they're having a bad attack. But if you don't have something like that, just get them near an open window We need or a fan. We need airflow for these guys. We need to get that air moving. We need it to be air that is uh, slightly humid. We don't want dry air. That's causing more problem for them. The big thing for these guys, um, you can also, uh, to decrease the inflammation, you could try something like the PEA. You could try something like the beta cetosterol, which are plant steroids. Our, our goal is to decrease the amount of exogenous or added steroid because these animals are usually put on either inhaled steroids or oral steroids. And then we get a lot of side effects and basically the animals become Cushingoid because we're giving them too many steroids to control their problem. Um, I only ever had one dog in practice that I had to put on chronic steroids um, and the reason that dog had to be on chronic steroids is because he lived in a house with smokers. The dog was literally being exposed to five packs of cigarettes a day being smoked in that house and his x-rays looked terrible and the dog was miserable and no one in the house was willing to quit smoking. So I said, well, you're either, either your small dog is going to have to live outside where he can get real air or we've got to keep him on steroids so that he can survive and breathe. That's really not fair to the animal. So what do you do if you have an animal with chronic bronchitis, chronic asthma? You do not use any scented cleaners in your house. You do not burn scented candles. You do not use... Um, 
diffusers with uh, oils in them that uh, could affect these guys. You don't use plugins. Uh, you don't wear perfume. Um, you've got any any um, any artificial scents. Don't use things like Febreze. Don't use carpet powders. As a matter of fact, don't use powders at all in your house. Anything that is going to cause more foreign material going into the body, they're they're reacting. Why do they have this chronic inflammatory disease? Because they've been exposed to things that caused that chronic inflammation. So um, uh, so those are things that you can do. So what are you going to clean your house with? Well, you can use a, a vinegar, a white vinegar and water solution. Um, you can use, frankly, just water. You can use something like Dr. Bronner's soap. Um, uh, Murphy's oil soap is another one that we, uh, our uh, house used to, for our wood floors, we use that a lot. So um, You've got to find more natural ways to do things. And uh, if there's smokers in your house, either your your pet needs to live somewhere where there's no smoking, uh, or you need to quit. And I've had a lot of owners quit for their animals, which is a good thing. We, you know, <laughs> helping more than one being by doing that. So um, there are natural ways that you can treat this. But for some, like my little dog that lived with all the smokers, there are some of these animals that they're disease is so long standing that you're not gonna get away with not using some sort of uh, medication for them. Um, animals that are gray or animals with a metal personality that's ruled by the lungs, those are gonna be uh, more commonly affected. So my big gray cat mittens, he's got pretty good asthma. And our old gray cat star had asthma. Um, which I did treat for a lot while, but uh, ended up not treating it, and she did just fine because um, I stopped using scented candles and anything like that in my house. Um, little Star did die of lung cancer at the age of 21. Was she predisposed to that because she was a metal personality gray cat who had chronic asthma? Probably. Uh, mittens is good most of the time, but every like I heard him yesterday doing a little cough. Um, so his sounds very wet, but I, it is dry. Uh, so you know there are things that you can uh, do. Um, air purifiers you can you can use. There's a, those ozone machines. I think they smell funny. I don't know whether they would make these animals feel better or worse. Um, hard to say. Okay, everybody. Um, Everybody have a wonderful Friday. Supporters, I'll see you tonight. We're going to talk about the uh, TCM circadian clock, the 24-hour clock for Chinese medicine, which is kind of fun. Um, maybe you can help yourself figure out uh, why you do certain things that you do at certain times of the day or night, why your animals do certain things that they do at certain times of the day or night. So... <clears throat> Yeah, that goose honk cough is uh, more likely to be collapsing trachea. They sound like a goose honking. And then we can also get the reverse sneeze, which is a snorting in. Cleaning with water and special microfiber. Yeah, those microfiber cloths are really nice. Sun versus wand. Yeah, tea pill versus powder. Very good, Teresa. That metal personality would pick that up. All right. See you supporters tonight.